She hosts the syndicated daily talk and lifestyle program, Rachel Ray, and three Field Network series, 30-Minute Meals, Rachel Ray's Tasty Travels, and $40 a Day. Ray has written several cookbooks based on the 30-Minute Meals concept, and in 2006, she launched the magazine Every Day with Rachel Ray. We're here tonight to celebrate her newest release, Everyone is Italian on Sunday. So without any further ado, please welcome Rachel Ray. Can all hear each other. We're all right in front of each other. Yeah! yeah. I have a feeling I know who's going to be first to go up and get their book signed. Yeah! Um, Everybody's Italian is the largest um, manuscript I ever uh, pumped out of my pitiful little computer that breaks all the time. Um, it was over 700 pages. It's 400 in print, but. Um, I, I, I hope you guys like it. It's it's really personal to me. It's like a little family scrapbook. It's all the stories of um, our collective life as a family and my favorite foods. And um, well, not a lot of thirty-minute meals, but everything under the sun. I mean, there's certainly quick recipes in there, but there's everything, literally, from starters to soups to meat, fish, seafood vegetables, my sister wrote a beautiful dessert section, my husband wrote an Italian cocktail section. It truly is a labor of love, and um, I hope you guys like it. Anyway, I'm here to answer any questions, and sign books, and take goofy pictures, and any guy, anything you guys want to do. We're, we're together for a while, so um, they have a microphone, and anything you want to ask, let's, does anybody have a question? I know you have one for sure. <laughs> What's my favorite vegetable? Um, well, when my mother was a little girl, she would run home to try and steal eggplant from the cellar before her brothers and sisters got home because she loved eggplant. So I love eggplant a lot because, you know, I'm a mother's daughter. But I really never met a vegetable I didn't care for. Okra is a little bit slimy, but very tasty if you fry it or mix it into some gumbo. So I, I'm even down with the okra. Um, I gotta say, I, I kind of like them all. I liked kale before it cost you $28 in Whole Foods. <laughs> I liked kale before y'all thought kale was cool. I liked kale as a kid. So I guess I'll pick kale. My mother would pick eggplant for sure. Very good question. What is your favorite vegetable? Oh, you don't eat any vegetable? Are you sure? Well, I eat carrots. Carrots? <laughs> See, now there you go. There's a lovely vegetable. Do you know what's carrot's best friend? Rabbit? No. <laughs> carrot's best friend. Carrot has a cousin with a little bit of an attitude. Carrot has a cousin that's like, oh yeah, I'm not carrot. I know what I'm doing, and I am, I'm on the block. Carrot has a cousin named Parsnip you should get to know. And you know, Parsnip is like a carrot with an attitude, and Parsnip is delicious if you mash him into potatoes. You take a carrot and a Parsnip, and you boil them together, and you mash them together? Shut up, they love each other. <laughs> they are really good. Maybe for Thanksgiving time, you could try that mashed carrot and parsnip. Because if you like carrot, I guarantee you you're going to be down with parsnip. Parsnip is his cousin, legit. They know each other. Yeah? Wow. <laughs> is there anybody else have a question? Yes? All cookbooks you have done, Yes. I have two favorites. The first one, uh, which we only sold in Price Shopper grocery stores, and my mom and I sat down at the kitchen table and I wrote it on legal pads, and this one because I put so many footnotes and storytelling into it, and it really is like our family scrapbook. This one's very important to me. It's, it's, it's stories about mom and my, my grandpa Manuel and my brothers and sisters, and you know, when my mom was a little girl, she was the first born of 10, 10 kids. And on Sundays, my grandfather, who had the largest garden and cooked the most food and knew how to can and preserve things, he would invite everyone in their community, all the Italian-American immigrants in upstate New York, would come over to, to their house for Sunday supper. 
And my grandfather would have so many people to his house on Sundays, he'd have to take the table outside because the, the house couldn't accommodate the number of people. And that's why I titled this book Everyone's Italian on Sunday. It's just a, a, a mental concept, really, that there's always room at the table and there's enough food. And I think that's a great concept for society, not just families. There's, we all have room for each other. Yes? What's your favorite dish to create with a family that everybody involved everybody? Oh, you gotta do more than one dish if everybody's working. Uh, you know, even when we just have a few friends over for the weekend, I try and over-program the food so that people are busy. Because everybody wants to help, you know? So lots of root vegetables and things that need to be peeled. Uh, lots of salads. Rolling of something is always important, whether it's gnocchi or meatballs. People like that rolling thing. They love to work with their hands and they love the, I don't know, the, the, the kind of mindless, you know, it's not as fun as, um, you know, there are two different types of, of, of the brain. It's, it's not as much fun as picking beans for some people, but it's more fun for other people. It, it, but they eat that sort of, so uh, beans or peas that need to be shelled or things that need to be rolled. Lots of that sort of repetitive work. But everybody likes to feel that they're contributing. So, yeah, over planned food when you have a crop. Yes, sir. Well, my grandfather um, was a, uh, had type 1 diabetes. My dad has type 2. Uh, I mean, a lot of the food that I write is in that discipline. Uh, um, but the next book that I'm working on is actually a book of duets where I team up with friends of mine that have to eat in very different diet disciplines, and I try and make one meal in duet with them, and then project and write a whole chapter within that discipline. So it'll have vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, pescatarian, flexitarian, everything diet, paleo, the whole, I'm trying. It's, it's difficult, but I'm trying, I'm trying. Because, you know, we, 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 we eat everything in my family. But we, we grew up largely lots of dark leafy greens and olive oil and lots of seafood and you know, not a lot of sweets and that kind of thing. So I like to think that we have very friendly diets for everyone in, in all of them. But yes, yes, there is a very specific book coming up about that. Yes? When did your love of cooking start? My mother did not trust anyone to watch her children. My love of cooking started with my mother forcing me to go to work with her from the time I was a baby. And, it, you know, you just, it gets in your blood when you cook for a living. It gets, it sort of gets in you. You know, like, I, um, you know, folks that are in the theater or my husband is a musician. And, you know, there's things that just get sort of embedded in your DNA and that's what you do. And, that's what makes you happy. For me, that was being around food and my mom and, and working in food. Makes me feel good. So that's why I do it. Yes? What's your favorite recipe? You know, it depends on who I'm cooking for. If I'm cooking for my husband, uh, you always want to, if, 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 in my opinion, if you're a successful cook, you're trying to care about the person you're feeding more than just what, what you like or don't like, you know? So for my husband, it's carbonara. Can I make the best carbonara you ever had that night? My mom, she loves greens. So it's you know something as simple as minestra, beans and greens. She loves eggplants, so really great carbonara, or really great stuffed eggplant. Just the best they've ever had of what their favorite thing is. It depends on who you're feeding. For me, I'm an equal opportunity eater. I was the kid when How to Eat Fried Worms came out. I would eat the worm if you gave me a dollar. <laughs> I will eat anything. Especially if you put garlic and oil on it. Or wrap it in bacon. My arm, I would eat the bacon. Yes? Um, what is your advice for other women who want to have like a, a big business personality like you've been able to do? Never wanted to have a big business anything. I just like working in food. My advice for anybody in this country is that it, it you know, no matter how much we fight, especially going into election years, it, it really is a great place. And if you work harder than everybody else and try and find true joy in it, don't complain about it.
good things will come. And when they come, just try and envision yourself and say, hey, is that a good opportunity? Can I see myself doing that? Or does that make more sense for me? But, I mean, I was raised work hard and try and be grateful for it and keep taking the opportunities as they come. I, I didn't plan much else after that, except I really liked being around food because everybody needs to eat, you have job security, you'll always have a date, and uh, it seemed like a good plan. I mean, as long as I work in food, I'm happy. With the exception of being a dishwasher, that was very humbling and hard. DMO was the worst and hardest job I ever had, but I'm glad I did it. Did it for a long time. Uh, anybody else? Yes? I'll have a question about cookbooks. I have a collection that I've had for about 30 years. It oh, must be beautiful. Times. It's weird. I've got everything from the Bordello cookbook to Vice Greens to the Russian tea, everything. And I realized I wanted to write my will up, and I realized I have no family to leave it to. And I'm wondering if you could suggest who or what organization? Yeah, you know, I, I have a huge cookbook collection too, and that's What's such that? an amazing, that's a mind-blowing question. That's the coolest question I've had in like ages, because I gotta figure that out too. Who am I gonna go yeah, that to? You know what? I think a lot of food banks would love to have ones that would make sense for them, and I think that there's, there's so many kids' programs. In fact, we're, we're, we're planning a show right now in, in Detroit. It's actually a boxing center, but it's become a life center for kids where they learn cooking skills and nutrition skills and life skills all in one. There's so many really great community programs where, where the community is trying to take over and teach latchkey kids how to make dinner for themselves and teach kids how to have better nutrition and be a little more in charge of their diets. That's a really interesting... I've got so many. I know. I mean, who wants a book on vice creams, you know? I mean, that's I have all sorts of strange... I have a book just but you have so many genres, you know? Yeah. I think exactly. you could do so much with it. I'm going to think more about that. When you come up, we'll talk more. Let's exchange information. That's a good... That's a, that's a big problem, I have to say one. I collect them, too. I collect them in languages I don't even speak. What the hell am I going to do with them? <laughs> but I try and figure it out from the picture. And I try and Google some of the language, you know? But I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm the same person. At flea markets, I'm buying Russian cookbooks. I don't speak Russian. I have no idea what I'm looking at. But I, I, I try, yeah. And I have all the stuff my mom gave me as a kid. Yeah. We have the same problem. We'll have to exchange. Anybody else? Yes? I've been trying to open a restaurant for six years. That's the God's honest truth. I just can't get the math together. Every time somebody finds out, uh, you know, I'm involved or something, the lease deals change. And it is a matter of time, too. I, I don't want anything fancy, very simple, a very simple concept. Sooner or later, you know what? Piano, piano. All things in time. Step by step. If it's meant to be, it'll happen. Oh, sorry, you're just scratching. Yes? <laughs> um, big I love Italian American food and I love Italian Italian food. Um, they are different, but the book has both because uh, my grandfather was a Sicilian man and he cooked very, very basic and for a lot of people. You know, he had um, he was a Sicilian, but he had more of a, kind of a Tuscan style to his food. He had more of a mainland, you know, long braised meats, lots of dark leafy greens. Um, in the summertime, we had the benefit of, of a lot of seafood, but he couldn't eat like a Sicilian in Ticonderoga, you know, he lived closer to Canada, like in place else, so. And his, the, the diet from when he was a little boy didn't work here, but. I love Italian American food too, there's chicken rigies in the book, you know, from Western New York, and there's a lot of Italian American food in there too. I mean, we were raised with a mix of the both. Uh, I, I see no reason to be a snob about either. I'm an equal opportunity eater. I think it, it, classic Italian cooking is very few ingredients and it's mostly a kitchen of the poor um, and making very few things taste really good and Italian American is kind of older and stronger and um, that's fine too, tons of garlic. So, 
And I smell like a salami all the time, so clearly I like both. Yes? I you keep mentioning upstate New York, and now you're mentioning Western New York, and I'm just curious. Well, I'm a huge baseball fan, so I love going out to Cherry Valley and Oneonta and the, oh, okay. uh, Cooperstown, and yeah, and I, I, and I love Wegmans and uh, you oh, know, you know Brooks Wegmans. Barbecue, and, and I love chicken riggies, so I love Western New York. But I am from upstate New York, I'm from the Adirondacks. Oh, okay. Straight so, up. Oh, like I'm from Buffalo. Oh, when you mentioned Western, I'm, I'm from Buffalo, so. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. The wings and also Wegmans. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, the whole, I like the whole triangle. I'm down with the whole state. <laughs> yes. Great hat. My favorite TV show, well, my, uh, in the morning I watch a lot of news, at night I watch a lot of TCM. I don't know that I have one specific favorite TV show. I, I watch a lot of everything. I love everything from American Horror Story to really great documentaries. and I watch a little bit of everything. What's your favorite? I love American Horror Story, right? We just had Sarah Paulson on the other day. She's so good! Hypodermic Sally this season. Do you have to last season and crick in your neck? Yeah, I love it. It's a very cool show. Yes? When do you usually get to the studio? What is your day like? Do you have a run through rehearsal before it actually goes on? Or? We don't do a scripted show. Every Thursday we talk about what we want to do the following week. We tape eight or nine shows on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We do pre-pro on Mondays and Fridays. And we do three shows a day, so I'll go home Oh, six or seven. We roll on the first show about 11 o'clock in the morning. I go to the gym around 5.45 or 6. Get ready, go to work. Um, and we talk through the basic structure of each of the three shows and we change audiences three times. Crew gets a big break in the middle. I usually do other business, you know, magazine stuff or writing or whatever during the crew break. And then I go home and make dinner. Fun. It's what I would do in our day off. Yes, sir. Lisa, I think you're fabulous. Thank you. I love your heels. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. You're about seven year old prodigy. You know why I like them? Because when you when you cook for a living, your feet end up looking like Frodo. I've been in the kitchen since I was 12. And these have buckles. So the bigger my feet get as the day goes on, I can loosen that buckle and they still fit in these hot shoes. <laughs> I've seen your show a few times. Yeah. And it's great. Thank you. And I wonder, what is your favorite guest that you've had on your show? Oh, I got a lot of favorites. Uh, Michael J. Fox, probably my favorite optimist. And the first time he came on the show, he sang that Billy Barra song from when he fell in love with his wife on the TV show. But then they got married in real life. Tracy Pollan, he was on the TV show with it. Yeah. And he sang that in my ear, and we danced together, and he was there to um, hug it out with a girl who raised $64,000 by herself selling pancakes on her school campus for Parkinson's research. I know. He's amazing. That was a big day. Tom Jones was my first crush when I was three years old, so I was pretty psyched when Tom Jones came there. And then I brought him home for dinner, and my husband said, you have to stop bringing home the people on your list to our house for something. <laughs> But I'm like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think you know what? Some of my favorite shows are shows that don't have celebrities at all, and it's when people come on and can see themselves. I mean, that's what I like about our show the best. It's not always about celebrities, it's just about people seeing themselves and feeling like they're a part of it. Anybody else? Never culinary school. Uh, I was always a good student, but I never went to school for cooking because I grew up working in restaurants. And um, my mother would, um, my mother is wonderful and we speak every day and I love her more than anything. But my mother will not agree with any anyone else about the way to do anything, especially in the kitchen. So if I come home and try to tell her that her technique of teaching me whatever was not right, my life would have been in danger. So I went to the culinary school with my mother. I'm very proud of it. That's where I found myself a cook and not a chef. Didn't want to come home and listen to mom <laughs> rip apart the CIA. Hmm. No, they're from all over. There's a 
enchiladas, Sicilian recipes, there's Italian American recipes. It's just the food I grew up with and things that I have made for my family over the years or my mother's made for us. My sister wrote the desserts, my husband wrote the um, cocktails, but everything in between, those come from my notebooks. I have a, a lot of composition notebooks. And I keep one for what I make for my family and one for what I write for all of the shows and magazines and things. And so this is all of my family composition books, all of my family notebooks. And is most of your recipes up here or are the recipes in your books? Yeah, well I write in my head like my husband loves music, he's a lawyer by day but his passion is music and he writes <laughs> songs all day. I write food in my head. That's just what I do. So I jot down, and as I said, every single thing I make at home I write in a composition book, and then I keep a separate one for what we publish. Do you have to reference them all the time when you're doing a recipe? Or do you I mean, I'll look it up for fun. If it's something that I really love the way that came together, I'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot I put juniper in that. I thought it was just rosemary and, and garlic. I mean, I'll glance at it, but no, I don't. I don't need it, but and the best stuff happens when you don't do that. Right? I get I get kind of annoyed when my family or friends specifically ask for what they want that weekend and they order like they're booking in in because I can't write like fresh stuff because everybody wants something that I've already done. So I'm like, mm, that's a try. I should stop asking people what they want. <laughs> so yeah, but it's a process. Yeah. My friend Melanie Dene did a book about this, and I, I turned her down a couple of times because I said, Mel, I would be so depressed, I wouldn't want to eat anything. I want to know it's my last meal, and if it was my last meal, I think I'd be going way harder than food. I'd be going like, I don't know, heroin? <laughs> <laughs> Something that would really make me unaware that it was my last meal. But I came up with a solution. My first meal, if there is a heaven, would be with my grandfather and the Runzo boys, because they were my best friends when I was a little kid. And he loved sardines and anchovies, so it would be sardine or anchovies, garlic and olive oil spaghetti. And I missed my first dog, Boo, and her favorite thing was butternut squash. So I would have butternut squash and a pit bull and three 70-something-year-old Sicilians at the table, and we would eat some really salty, fishy spaghetti and butter and squash, and then we all play tray set and drink homemade wine and grappa and some pasta. That would be heaven. Yes? Now, I cook like you do, like you say that I don't measure, I just right. don't. Throw it in there. Marcella is on, said it's like putting a bird in a cage. Yeah. So how do you give somebody a recipe and say... You give them the idea of it. You say, I make the promise that these flavors go together, and here's the method of how you cook it, here's the heat you use, and the temperature, and how long you cook it. And you let them try and discover it themselves. And that's just my opinion. A lot of people believe you have to make it a certain way, there's a science to it, or it isn't a recipe. I don't believe that. I think that's for baking, not for cooking. I think it has to become your food once you make it for yourself. It's my idea. I think these things go together in this way, and this is the way I put them together. It's your food when you make it, and you have to decide how much salt you want or if you like that flavor. I give you what I do, but I want you to feel empowered to do what you want to do, too. So I try to write it like Lucy Cooper. Two turns in the pan, half a bomb a quarter of a bomb I don't think you blind, but I do want you to taste your food. Yeah. That's why I, I like the way that you cook. Thank you. I do the same thing. I'm trying to encourage you to have fun and make your own time. Yes, sir. Uh, is it possible to use the value in avoid carbohydrates? Sure. Uh, there's a ton of recipes in there that don't have carbohydrates. There's lots of seafood. I mean, I love carbohydrates. I've tried to live without them, and I've become a very cranky person, and my husband wants to divorce quickly. So I keep them. But, you know, again, going back to lots of my friends have gone vegan and discovered that they are incapable of um, processing gluten or it makes them feel worse. And there are so many wonderful options that are gluten free and all that, but just dark leafy greens and seafood and Braids, meats, and just vegetables alone, for sure. I mean, literally half that book doesn't have gluten in it. If 
if I looked, other than I always say add a hunk of bread. But if we left the bread out. Um, but yes, I, I think it's truly possible. Italians love vegetables. My grandpa fed 10 kids out of his garden. Totally. Yes, sir. Not to sound like a huge drinker asking this, but if you walked into a bar, what is your favorite cocktail? What would you order? My husband is the mixologist, and anything he's pouring, I will drink. Um, <laughs> if it's just me, if I'm home alone, I don't mix cocktails. I'm a wino, and I prefer Italian reds. And my favorite Italian red is the city I was married in, um, Brunello di Montalcino, or Rosa di Montalcino. And um, I also love a cheap and cheerful uh, black grape from Sicily, Nero d'Avola. And uh, yeah, I'm a wine if I'm alone, but if my hubby's home, I will drink everything he's pouring. He's a great mixologist. Yes, ma'am? I, um, I do a lot of your recipes, but I'm a vegetarian, so mm -hmm. I use soy products, but I still use all your ingredients. And I want to know if you ever take anybody's, um, um, somebody requested something, you would make it? I don't know. Like, yeah, sure. Like I said, the, the, the next book I'm working on is actually vegan, vegetarian, and all that. And I have a friend that came up this weekend, and she doesn't do soy either. So I use liquid amino for her vignette for roasted oysters and all that. Yeah, we may not make substitutions, of course. I'm not one of those people who says, eat it my way, don't eat it. Fed for yourself, vegetarian, here's the salad. <laughs> yeah, not cool. Yes? What's your favorite food to make during the holidays? Um, my grandpa's stuffed artichokes are one of my favorites, and I love braised or stewed anything, stewed vegetables, stewed meat. And, you know, things that the you can make ahead and the longer they sit around, the better they taste. So stewed everything this time of year. In fact, yesterday I made dinner for the entire week for my mom and for us. That's the way we went. I made a huge pot of caponata, I made three beans and greens, you know, I made a like big minestrone and made sauces I, I cooked for the week. And it's all braised and slow cooked stuff. Not to be greedy for a second question, but my mom hated Brussels sprouts as a kid and she promised we would never have to eat them. But, I'm sorry to my mom, I actually liked them when I tried them. So what is the best beginner Brussels sprouts thing I could make? Uh, you cut, cut, them, cut, them, cut them in half and then put them cut side down, coated in olive oil, salt and pepper, and you can roast them. And then douse them with some sort of acid, aged balsamic, a splash of lemon. You can uh, braise them, you can start them in a saute pan, get a little color on them and add liquid and then finish cooking them through like chicken stock or vegetable stock. I love bacon or pancetta and anything. Yum! So <laughs> render out the, the bacon or the pancetta, take it out of the pan. Again, put your Brussels sprouts cut side down, brown them a bit, add some liquid, put the lid on, let them cook through a bit, then put the crunchy bacon back on top. But just roasting them is delicious too. 